Hi there, welcome to the Gordy and Gubbs podcast. I'm John Gubber here in the UK and over in Seattle is my good friend Gordon Hill. How are you today, Gordon? I'm very well, thank you. Very well indeed and looking forward to having a nice chat. The last time we chatted was international break and it seemed to come around ever so quickly these days, the international breaks, Gordon. Obviously, the talking point this time around was Thomas Tuchel being appointed manager of England. How do you feel about a German being in charge of the English national team? It, it, it doesn't really reflect the guy being German. It's just how can he manage the England team, which has been one of the toughest jobs, seems to be for years and years. And we seem to put the, the you know, people in place that we think that can do it. But it's not we, it's the FA board, which we'll talk about. So, yeah, you know, another man, another day, another game. The thing is, over here in the UK, it has caused a lot of controversy. It seems to be split down the middle because a lot of people, players and fans, they seem to think that England should have an English manager. I must admit, in the past, I've always felt that we should have an English manager, but we don't live in that world anymore. If FIFA had decided the manager of a country had to come from that country and it was the same for everybody, then fair enough. But that ship seems to have sailed a long time ago. So should we really forget about where the manager comes from and just look for the best guy for the job? I, I, I now totally agree after reading all the facts over the last couple of days and reading articles and listening to players uh, that, that air their views. Yes, I'm English. I'd love to have an Englishman that could do the job and, and, and lead the England team. I mean, that's a wish. That's not, we've got to. That's just a wish. I wish we did. Um, at the time... We haven't at this time. We haven't got one. Um, we've got young managers coming through, uh, but needed to be be uh, blooded into the job, you know. It, and and Tommy's Tuckle was right on the scene, so to speak. And uh, I think it it surprised everybody that the FA did it so quick. Well, that's the thing. They said they spoke to ten on their shortlist, but that sounds unlikely because when you hear Thomas Tuchel speak about it, he says. He got an approach, they offered him the job, and he quite fancied it. And then it seems on the second meeting or the second discussion, they agreed terms. So it seems to have happened very quickly for what appears to be the FA's first choice. It seems like he was given that situation a little bit too quick. And I think that's really what's upset the apple cart with players and supporters. And it's not the case of, is he good enough? No, he's, he's there. We're not arguing with that point. We're just saying that I think these players are, and the, and, and the fans are saying, well, that was a bit quick, you know, and now the next thing is they're going to dig up all their history and bits and pieces. And it's the same as Ten Hag. Leave him alone. He's been He's got his job now. He's got to do a job. He'll live and die by it. So, you know, I had a joke, John. I joked on my... Twitter that um, I hope he can sing the national anthem. That was a joke. That I mean, goodness gracious me! It was a light-hearted. I hope he can only because Lee Carsley did, didn't sing it. But that doesn't mean he's a bad manager or a bad coach. It's just the fact that he he is what he is. You know, Thomas Turkle. You know, is what he is. If he gets a couple of results and everybody says, "Oh, this is." All I look at, John, is great football with the players that we have that are British, uh, English, sorry. Yeah, I'm absolutely delighted that we've chosen Thomas Tuchel because I think he's the best man available. I would like to have an English manager and hopefully we'll get an English manager further down the road when one is ready. If it was down to me and we had to choose an Englishman right now, I'd have chosen Eddie Howe because I think he's the best we have above Graham Potter. But the reality is we haven't had an Englishman win the Premier League no, ever. No. The last Englishman to win the top flight was Howard Wilkinson. And that was back in 1992, in the days of the old first division, when we had Eric Cantona playing for Leeds, before he crossed the Pennines to help Alex Ferguson begin his domination of the Premier League. So if we haven't got a manager who's good enough, and we both agree that we liked Gareth Southgate and what he did, but he wasn't good enough to take England to the next level. So are we not now going to the next level? Aren't we giving the fans what they really want, if we're honest about this? I think... What killed Gareth Southgate? Because he had eight years. It was his attacking 
system that wasn't there that peed off a lot of people and not seeing us attack, being very defensive minded. And and I think if it had been more attack orientated, I think he would have kept that job. I think we would have seen better, a better England team. And as I said, you know, he he was an appointment by the FA. Was this appointment, Tommy Tuchel, from one person that's a business person in the FA? That's going to be the question, and that's what people are up in arms about. But it still, it still goes for me is I don't care who's in charge as long as I see it on the field. I know we haven't won anything since 66, but when you put an England shirt on, John, you want to win everything. It's not a case of like, and it doesn't matter who the managers are. Doesn't matter. We've had, I've had four top England managers. I've had Bobby Robson. I've had Ron Greenwood. I had Don Reavy. I had Terry Venables. So you get to see exactly what the systems are. They were great managers in their own rights. Because they never picked up, because they picked up a trophy. Oh, they're not good managers. Of course they're good managers. Every manager has a certain period of time where he has a golden spell, then it drops off. All those managers that you mentioned, though, Gordon, they, they were all kind of iconic managers who were great in their day. And we don't seem to be producing those types of managers these days. Why do you think that is? And do you think it's because we're not giving English managers a chance in the first place? The last guys to get a go at elite clubs have not delivered. David Moyes at United, who didn't last very long, more recently, we've had Graham Potter and Frank Lampard at Chelsea, Roy Hodgson at Liverpool, Stephen Gerrard, he almost relegated Aston Villa. And when we've given these guys a chance, they just haven't delivered. So how do we get to a position where we can get an English manager who's good enough to be the England manager? If you look at football in general, managers, when whoever you are and you give up playing or whatever, you want to become a coach or a manager. Oh, I'm going to be a manager one day. I'm going. That's what you all say. But it's a completely different scenario from playing. You can't just say, well, I'm going to be a manager. So what's happened is, is that they've all said, well, he was a great player. doesn't make you a great manager. So basically, I, I, done this, I, I went on the same road. And then I realized that the, managers, the managerial side of it wasn't for me because it was, at the end of the day, it was a heart attack job. And especially when, like, we've got a, a, a recent example. We look at, for instance, Wayne Rooney. Wayne, fabulous player. Absolutely great for England and great for United. And, and I tell you what, he has now had to come back down to earth because he, he's, he's been around. He's doing his managerial apprenticeship, which I did at Chester. I learned that, oh, my gosh, I haven't got money. I've got money. I haven't got players. I can't get players. Wayne Rooney has done that. Steve Gerrard had that chance at Aston Villa. Frank had that chance with a couple of clubs. Wayne is now back at Plymouth night, trying his hardest to do the best he possibly can. We've got the managers there. It's just that not everybody can win the World Cup. You get your apprenticeship and after a while, a lot of managers or players that become managers find that it doesn't work and it's not for them. It's, it's very tough to get to where you want to be with a club. But it's also very tough once you're there to stay there. And you get a little bit of, oh, he's an up and coming manager like Eddie Howe. Oh, Eddie, well, brilliant, brilliant. Done great, Bournemouth, Bournemouth. Let's the big club grab him. Oh, the next thing we do is we'll give him the England job. He may not want that. And if you look at the Tommy, the Tommy Tuckle situation, the job was available and he took it. It's a job that became available and he took it. The people were saying, oh, you know, we're up in arms. Harry on the, on the, in, in the news is apps. Oh, we shouldn't have done. Yeah, it, it's a wish, Harry. We wish we could have an Englishman in there. 
but it's not happening. You wish we could have an Englishman at Man City, but it's not going to happen because the game, as you said, has changed. Absolutely. I described Thomas Tuchel yesterday in another video that I did as being the right man in the right place at the right time. Do you feel that somebody like Eddie Howe, who I know would like the England job one day, I've heard him speak about it publicly, about the possibility of becoming England manager in the future. I know he's said he'd like to be England manager one day. So do you think it's just a case of he's not ready? And do you think he could be the next man in line, maybe in 18 months time, regardless of whether or not we do well on the Thomas Tuchel? Do you think that someone like Eddie Howe is waiting in the wings? And would he be a good choice in your mind to be a future England manager? I don't think he's waiting in the wings. I think Eddie is getting on with his job. That he's as a as a manager, as a player. I think he's going to get on with his job and do the best he possibly can. And if the situation arises that Newcastle want to change, and England's job situation is not going too well, I think it's that's football. That's the way it changes. And I think with Eddie, yeah, great. I you know. Um, I would have, I would have really inquired to what Newcastle would want, but it doesn't mean to say that you know, you 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 are a club manager and then at that automatic jump up to a national team manager. That they're, they're two different managers, you know. You're you're dealing with players out on an everyday basis at club. When you're an international, you can only look at them in games and you can only have them at certain times. And you've got so many different players playing under managers from all over the world now. You have now got to put that successful team together. And we saw it. We, and everybody goes back to when Spain became, oh, everybody wanted Spain. Oh, what a fantastic way they're playing. You know, tiki-taki and all that. But everybody else tried to employ that, that system. And then everybody says, right, OK, it's got to change. Everybody then tried to say, well, we've got to have inverted wingers. They changed. Everybody got overlapping defenders. The game is changing so much that the managers are now from all over the world. So you've got Uruguayan, German, English, Dutch, Italian. Their own mindset from where they come from and their players as well. So now you've got to say to yourself, I've got to get all those to think on my wavelength. And you might not get that. And if you don't get that, John, it doesn't matter whether it's international level or club level, you're not going to get success. I'd like to go back to that point about being in the right place at the right time, because Graham Potter did well at Brighton. Then he went to Chelsea. A big club gave him a chance and he couldn't deliver. And he's been off the radar for a bit of time. So what he was available... That could have, they could have gone to Graham Potter. He could have been on the shortlist. We don't know if he was. I, I guess he was on the shortlist. I don't know how high up that alleged 10-man uh, shortlist he would have been. Do you think he was not in the right place at the right time because his star has faded? Do you think it's almost become like a popularity contest? Because what I like about Thomas Tuchel is why I think that he's a popular, a popular choice with a lot of football fans because he's good on camera. He speaks very well. He's, he's got charisma. He makes you feel excited about the game. You know, I've been supporting Eric Ten Hag at Manchester United from the beginning, but he's a little dour sometimes. And perhaps people can warm to a personality like Thomas Tuchel more than they can to other managers like Gareth Southgate. He was a little bit boring. Is that a factor? I totally agree with you, John. I mean, you've just said it. it's the personality. It's the charisma. It's the way that you deliver. And, and I don't mean on the field, it's the way that, you, you, you know, we look at the enthusiastic managers and we go, wow, if only we could have some of that. I mean, and that's what boils back to different players, different countries, different managers, different styles. The, 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 you know, we're looking at, well, take, for instance, Pochettini at this moment in time. Poch has come over to the States. He's had a, a smashing time, you know, um, over in England learning the tough ropes over there, going abroad, coming back. Now he's come across to the States and everybody says, oh, you know, he's going to do this, he's going to do this. There's too much emphasis on, on, on him being able to deliver. And what does he do? He plays the first game. OK, fine. He has to look at his players. They win. Everybody says, oh, he's done it. He's done it. He's great. 
Then the next game, they go against Mexico. And then all of a sudden, they get beaten 2-0 and everybody gets, well, hold on a minute. Yeah, it, there, there is no time here to bed somebody in. And to be honest with you, John, Pochettino has got his work cut out. You're close to the American scene, obviously, because you're over there. What's the perception of Pochettino being manager of the USA? Do you think he's a popular choice? Do you think he's going to do well as we count down to the World Cup over there in 2026? Well, I think basically they said, oh, we've got a top, top person. We've got a top person. Let's bring him in. Oh, he's done it over there. He's done it over there. Bring him in. You know, they'd done it before with Jurgen Klinsmann and it didn't work. You know, so we've seen these other coaches come in that 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 the the states are still learning the game. The states are, are very young at it at this moment, and I'm not, and I and I'm not being rotten to the U.S. I know because I was around when the, when it started to be developed. So I've seen what's come through and who's come through and everything else. What the what Pochettino has got to do, he's either got to establish what he wants very quickly, that's a discipline, and that is what his style of play's got to be, and then he's got to enforce it and force it hard. And I think Tommy tuchel has got to do exactly the same with the England team, with the talent that he has at his disposal. So when people say, yes, Gordon, you know, you're saying this, you're saying that, I wouldn't have looked at him in a month of Sundays. 18 months they give him is quite a long time, I would say, for a England manager. I, I would have, you know, I, 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 I don't know who makes those decisions at the FA, but I'd have looked at, I think he would, should have been given a trial period to actually prove himself. That's my opinion. That's what I would have looked at. My wish would have been, like we've said, would have been English. But what was around and who is around that could possibly go into that position and do the job? And, you know, I, I look at it and say, well, if he's the best man out there at this moment in time and they think he's the best man, then all the very best. But don't use the England team as a stepping stone to thinking that it's going to be the, the, the holy grail because it's the hardest job in the world. And Gary Southgate even said that. It's a hard job. It's a hard job. And I find it, and I, I, I agree with him. I agree. With, and all the, all the pundits and the, and the match analysis people, and, you know, you can say what you like. But I, I'm looking at, as said, if it's good for the country, it, uh, not got the country, if it's good for the England team to be playing good football, I'm all for it. I don't care who out. I don't care who you know who's in charge. Somebody's got to do it. One of the things that makes it one of the hardest jobs in the world is the scrutiny that the England manager gets from everybody, from the fans, from the media, from the whole shooting match. I do feel that because Thomas Tuchel is not English, and because he's German, he's going to get more scrutiny than another manager would have got. I felt with Gareth Southgate, he was very much a media darling, and the media wanted to build him up and give him a good chance. I feel with Thomas Tuchel. They're already looking for ways to catch him out. And certain sections of the media want him to fail. I feel he can almost draw a parallel now between the England manager and the Manchester United manager, Eric Ten Hag. I feel that the media are out to find Tuchel a failure. And if he doesn't do it in the first match, the pressure's going to start from the get-go. One of the things I really like about Thomas Tuchel, though, is that I think he's got a, a strong enough personality to deal with that. So how important do you think it is to have that strong personality? And what do you want to see from him in his opening game? I already heard uh, ex-players urging Tuchel to stick to keeping players in their club positions. Personally, I want to see him adopt a much more attacking style than Southgate did. What would you like to see him do? I can't, I can't tell you that. It's, it, um, people say, oh yeah, I'll do this, do this, do this, do this. Yeah, okay, fine. I might as well have the job. So what I'm looking at is saying, uh, what I want him to do is to realise what the talent he's got and use it the best he can. Because he's got such an abundance of talent, it's a case of a combination, you know, playing around with it. You haven't got time to play around with it, Thomas, because once that whistle goes and you don't look as though you're going to produce it, then you're going to have the media on you. And getting back to your, 
I don't give a monkey's whether he's German, Irish, Scots, Welsh. I don't. If he can do the job, I'm more interested in being able to do the job. If he produces football, I, I we have many conversations, you and I. And many conversations, I say, I tell you what, I like the way he plays. I love the way that Greece played when they beat England. I loved it. It wasn't a case of, well, you shouldn't be against the country. No, I'm not against my country. I am looking at good football. I'm not looking at boring football where you want to turn the TV off. I want football that's attacking. I want to... It, People seem to realize, uh, don't seem to realize the bottom line in this game is I score more goals than you. How do I get them? So that means he goes to watch games. Is Rashford on song? Is Mount on song? Is Bellingham on song? Is, and so then he gets that squad and says, well, and people say, well, he hasn't picked such and such. Well, that's because he's obviously seen him and he's not on form. What an England manager has to do is look at the players that are playing the best at the time. And that could change. But we don't like that change. We don't, we know, oh, you should have played, should have, should have, should have, would have, could have, don't happen. And, and it's the same, what you, right time, right place. That's exactly what this situation is. So to me, the United situation and the England situation are very, very similar, where... You're now seeing business people at United you know, drop the axe. And you're looking at the England people saying, maybe it's time that we done that. And they, they're taking a, 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 they're not a chance. They're taking a gamble now with Tommy Tuchel to pull it out. You're looking at Ten Hag. But with Ten Hag's got all the time in the world, so to speak, to get it ready. He's, he's had his buy-in. He's got the players he wants. There's no other thing but you now have to deliver results. You've got what you wanted. Don't look at anybody else and saying, you know, this and that. Don't look at, don't look at complaining about your injuries because every single club in the country has got their injuries. What you've got to do is to say to yourself, right, OK, I've got what I want. Now let me work on them day after day after day. Tommy Chukul hasn't got that. Tommy Tuchel now has got a, a limited amount of time to get a team ready for the next, you know, in January. So he's now got to do his scouting missions to look at every single player that's in the England squad or is a, or is a, 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 a phone call from the manager. Oh, by the way, such and such is playing well. Come and have a look at him. Such and such is playing well. That's got to be his job. He's not going to be a day-to-day -day on the training. And wish him the very best of luck with it, you know. Um, so the, it, the both clubs, both, both oh, sorry, not both clubs, both teams, the England team, love it. Three lines on my chest, never going to change. Never going to change. United, never going to change. But they, they, they're going through a bit of a, a, a tough time at the moment. Both, you know, Lee Carsley says he's he's not, you know, he's not interested. Fine, that's fine. And then you get the question, John, who is capable of doing that job? So you look at the hot favourites. Tommy Tuchel became a hot favourite. You give him the situation. Let let him get on with it. Absolutely, as you already pointed out, it's such a different job from club football, and there's going to be. A little bit of a bedding in period for Thomas Tuchel, going from a club manager to an international manager, as you say, he's going to be going around looking at all the players. It's a totally different job. But going back to what you asked about before, what do the fans want? Well, for me, as a fan, I've, I've been bored to tears watching England for years and I, I kind of lost interest a little bit, to be honest. But I do feel a little rejuvenated in my interest because I feel we've got a manager now who can possibly do something. But what I want most, apart from obviously winning silverware, is to see a team to be proud of a team that plays entertaining football. That's pretty much what I want as a United fan as well. That's the way we've been brought up. We want to see entertaining football. We want to win trophies. But I think first and foremost, especially when you go to a World Cup, it's very hard to win a World Cup. You have one little disaster in the out. And there's a lot of other good teams. What I'd like to see above all as a team that we're all proud of. Exactly. And if we don't win, let's go down fighting and not lose because we've been too safe. 
What well, I think a lot of fans are interested in, you, you can't tell Thomas Tuchel who to pick, I know, but I'm just interested in who you think are the players we might want to build a team around. I mean, personally, I'd like to see him build a team around someone like Cole Palmer from Chelsea, ironically, and maybe not automatically pick Phil Foden, who does great for Manchester City, but he doesn't do it very often for England. I feel that Cole Palmer is such a great player and he was being held back by Gareth Southgate. I'm also optimistic about Kobe Mainu. That's probably been my Manchester United bias. I think he's another great player who could really develop over the next few years. But I feel Cole Palmer is already there and he's a good player to build a team around. So I'm wondering, would you build a team around Cole Palmer or would you build it around Jude Bellingham? Or do you try and get all these players in? Because that's where some of our managers have gone wrong in the past. If you go back to Sven, he was trying to fit in Gerrard and Scholes and Lampard. Do you try and fit all the best players in or do you pick one or two of those players and build a team around them? What do you think? I, I think you've got to look at the core of your team. And the core of your team, you're going to start in the defence, midfield and front runners and then build outwards like a tree. And it's so that you know for a fact that you're going to get um, strength in your defence, in midfield, but I think you've got to be full. Uh, if you if you if you look at, I always put I always do it as an analogy, and everybody and everybody says, "Oh, really?" I said, "Yeah, I look at it as a tree. If I've got a tree trunk, the hardest thing to do is get through that tree. If if I want to get round, I've got to go through the branches. I've got to go down the sides. I've got to go through there. But if I've got that core down there, say for instance, two defenders, two midfielders, and I always will play with two strikers, always." And so I've got there. It's very difficult because what happens is, is then you're looking at players that can do it. Which two defenders would you build it? Which two midfielders would you build it? You can't just say I'll have one and one and one and build around them, because you're 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 better in strength for me. In a team to have one that I can protect you and you can protect me, and I think with. That's that's what I would be looking at. I don't know what Tommy Tuchel's going to be looking at. Um, but you've also got to be looking at the person or the player that is on form and doesn't go off. You know, I I, I like Cole up front, uh, Palmer. I, I, I like him. But it, to me, he's just missing just a little bit. Consistency. That's it. So, But then you look at Bellingham. Um, he plays well with his club, comes in here, and sometimes he doesn't produce, sometimes he's not there. We've got to forget about all these superstars, and they've got to be players to you that can do the job that you want. Not what they can do for Madrid, what they can do for United, it's what they can do for you. How good are they to be what you want them to be in a game? And to me, it's one game at a time. I want to win that. In in an England job, you're one game. You're one game. You're one game. In a jo- in a in a in a club job, you are a season. You're looking to the season. You're looking to the season. You have to. That's what we call the quality in your squad. England haven't got that, but they've got the quality with players. Does he get the right recipe to put out on that field? If it's negative, like yourself, I'm getting bored with it. Don't play attacking football. Sits back, doesn't go go for it. England, job, you have to go for it because there are there are national teams around. That it's the World Cup, and I I say to the World Cup, this is the World Cup with 16 teams. They all might get a result against each other, but then. The better teams get stronger as they go through. They, that you know, it's like we have a saying: when the when when the tough gets going, the tough show you. And that's exactly what the big clubs, the Brazils and the Argentinians and 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 the French and the Germans, they start to get going as a tournament. They warm up, so to speak. They do enough to get them through, and then it comes like wow. This is the, that's what makes the World Cup. That's exactly what Tommy Tuchel's got to look at. Long term, of course, he'd love to bring up a trophy. What we would love, we'd love to bring up a trophy. We'll still have that stigma, 
No English coach has won. That's damaging. That's damaging because we have good coaches. It's just that they, they will not be given that, um, that label, good guy. We've got it. But guess what Tommy Tuchel's taken? He's taken his assistant, who is English. So look at it whatever way you want. Football is what we've got to be played on the field. Attacking football is what I was groomed on. Yeah, you need a good defence. But I said, I, I always look at a tree trunk on a in a game. My two, two, two that can always help out. And I just put the branches on. When you talk about how long he's got in the job and you said maybe 18 months is too long. Well, for me, I kind of disagree because we don't have that many games and 18 months is not a long time. Basically, they're saying to him, go and win the World Cup. And he's going to be judged on whether or not he wins the World Cup because it's only 18 months and he doesn't start until January. OK, he's going to be preparing for the job. And what I like about Thomas Tuchel is he's actually been there and he's won trophies. He won the Champions League when they were underdogs. And he outthought Pep Guardiola, who's supposed to be the best manager in the world. And he did it with a weaker team. OK, when he won the German League with Bayern Munich, he did it on the back of Nagel, Nagelsmann's team. And he was only there for a few weeks, but he still got them over the line. Then he won the, uh, previously won the league with PSG. Or OK, maybe it's a Farmers League. But the reality is he's been there and he's managed top, top players. He's managed some of the biggest players in the world, in fact. And He's got that winning mentality. He knows what it's like to win. So I think you as a player, when you were managed by someone who'd won trophies, does that not give you more respect for the manager? I'm interested in how you'd react as a player. Will that help him win one for us? Absolutely. Somebody that's done, been there, got the trophies. Absolutely. I think you can't but respect. You can't but listen. You can't but try to do and help out as much as you possibly can. Because if, if he's wanting to do that, He's, all, he's, he's helping you to get better. So that makes you a better player. If all of a sudden you pick up the, um, uh, the, 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 the World Cup, I mean, that is a team effort. That's completely a team effort. But his job is to like get you to play your best at a certain time. And like, when I look at it and I think to myself, well, I ate it. yeah, maybe you're right with, you know, maybe I was wrong, and I was wrong because I think eighteen months might be a might be a, a, a nice period for him to get bedded in, to see what he's going to give us, and I and and what I I am afraid of is that if he goes in and he doesn't get the results, people and the media are going to absolutely slaughter him, which is sad, you know, because you can't build. You cannot build overnight. You cannot build a team overnight. He's, he's selecting players from different clubs, different ways of doing things. And you're now just saying, OK, fine, put him into a pot, stir it and see what we come out with. Are they going to play or aren't they not? So, you know, the period of time will give him a good idea, give him a good idea, give him a good chance to actually get prepared for the World Cup. I mean, yes, the World Cup is the pinnacle. So if you win it, you win it. You know, you you are the, you are the top. But it doesn't mean to say as a player you don't keep trying. And it's not the case of you don't want to win games. It's a case of are we good enough to win games? Have we got the confidence? And like I said, Sir Alex, great, done it. United kept those players under wraps. And pushed him, pushed him, pushed him. Tommy Doherty, I can tell you, in the period of time he was there, he made sure that he was behind you 100 per 100%. So Matt, exactly the same. I don't see that with Ten Hag, which is something that, you know, um, I've seen over the years that different managers... There, there's George Graham was a, was a motivator. You know, Brian Clough was a motivator. You know, um, you look at what we've had. They're not motiva They weren't motivators. These, you know, they, they, they're, they're oh yeah, playing okay football. But can he motivate you when you're down? Can he get you to play? You know, and and 
Tommy Tuchel, and we've seen it, you know, with the bust-ups he's had at Chelsea when he's had a go at other. That's brilliant. That shows you the passion. Passion, determination, and know-how. And, and as I said, I wish him the very best of luck now, you know, and I've looked into it, and I've looked into it, and I, I, I hope it's the football that we want, you know, or we're looking for, because the supporters want it. I'm, you know, I'm, I, I sit back and watch, John. I, I, I sit back and watch, and yeah, I'm critical at times, very critical. But if he's doing well, I, 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 I'll pat him on the back. I've done it with Greece. I said that, that Greece played great football, you know. And I think, as as a whole, everybody looks at that and says, "Oh, well, you're you're against." I'm not against anybody in football if it's good football. If it's if they're trying to score goals, which I've always been bred to believe, you score, they've got to score, they've got to attack you, you've got to score. That's football through and through. Maybe I'm an old stager. Maybe you know, you know. I think we come from the same generation, Gordon. We appreciate beautiful football, and that's what we like. Whoever plays it, we appreciate it. And it would be nice if our team can play that type of football. Another thing I'd like to mention about Thomas Tuchel is where I think he's a lot different from Sven Goran Eriksson and Fabio Capello, is that he's already done it in the Premier League. So he might not be an English man, but he represents the English league, which is now the best league in the world. Partly because we've got all these foreign players and foreign managers and it's the place to be. So I feel that if England do win the World Cup with Thomas Tuchel or another trophy, we're doing it with a guy who represents the English league. And I think that's quite an important thing that a lot of people are missing. I think that stands him head and shoulders above our previous foreign managers because he's been there and he's done it with English players. And he's also got the best out of Harry Kane, our captain and leading scorer when he took him to Bayern Munich. So he obviously respects and appreciates Harry Kane. For me, Tuchel has got a lot going for him. He's not just a complete outsider who's just been handed the England job. He's, he's got some English pedigree. I, 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 can't, I can't disagree with you on one point there. I can't. I, I, I think that... You've got to look at, say, what he wants to do, but you've got to look at what's pushing him. What's inside him? What's ticking? What's making him say, I want to be, I don't care. I'm going to have a go at it. I'm going to see if I can get there. I'm going to see if I can produce it. And I think that's what winners do. And, and you know, sometimes you don't get there, but you're not a failure. You're a winner because you're, you're a trier. You try. And there's going to be a team that might be better on the day. But as long as you are trying and trying to produce it on the field, you'll always get support. And at United, we did. When we were losing, we, looked at, we didn't look at the crowd. We heard the crowd get on and, and want to back us. I think that's the same situation. With the English fans now, what... I, I really don't know what we're going to be looking at. I really don't. I mean, one or two results that go for us, yes. One or two results that go against us, they're going to be. They're going to be. Oh yeah, he's a wrong. You know, you cannot tell. You cannot say it. But his drive will be. I think looking at it and going through his facts and his stats is that. If he doesn't do it here, he'll do it somewhere else or try keep trying. Why? Because he's a trier. He's not giving up. He's trying. A couple of quick points I'd like to make. He's a totally different character, but I draw a parallel with Jose Mourinho. Tuchel wants to go to different places and succeed. And I think he's looking at his legacy. He's done it in France. He's done it in Germany. He's done it in the Premier League. If he can do it with our national team, that's another feather in his cap and it'll prove he's a really great manager. So I think that's part of his motivation. And one thing I'd like to steer you towards, I'd like you to talk about the four England managers you mentioned earlier who you've worked with. In contrast to Gareth Southgate having an easy ride with the media, as I said, I now sense that Tuchel is going to be going back to the old days, more like when you played, perhaps. I remember when Bobby Robson was getting slaughtered by the media for things happening away from football. Don Revy, he had a lot of stuff going on in his life. Then we had Ron Greenwood, who was a totally different character. He was really old school. And then, of course, we had Terry Venables, who, for me, was the best manager we've had in the last 30 years. I don't think we've had a manager who could live up to Venables since he was forced out in 1996. 
I'm hoping that Thomas Tuchel could be that man. But I'm wondering, can you give us some thoughts on the England managers you've played for? Do you, do you have a favourite or were they all so different you can't really compare them? Um, I, 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 I categorise them. Um, Ron Green was, was a very much methodical thinker. Uh, same, what, exactly the same as what he was at West Ham. Um, you then go on to Bobby Robson, who was at Ipswich and then obviously went to Newcastle. And he was he he wanted to play pretty, pretty football, but he want, I, I like the football he play, wanted to play. Um, uh, you had uh, Samat knew what he wanted. S you know, Samat and he was a Scotland. And then you had Tommy Dockett. He was a Scotland manager. And he was very much like, we're going to get it done. We're going to go, we're going to play. Um, and then you look at um, Don Reavy, who had a great Leeds team. And you could tell what team you're going to get from the Leeds team, what the England team wanted to be like, because he was very much, every player could play. You had Eddie Gray and, all, and you had Lorimer and people like that, that you knew that when you're out there, they was a whole team. And they would kick the living daylights out of people like Johnny Giles, Billy Bremner. You knew what you was going to get. So you had to play against these players. And that's the mentality that he bought, you know. And then you've got Terry Venables, who, who I was 12 when I was at QPR with Venables. And I could see the character and the, 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 the wanting to be with you, wanting to help you, wanting to, you know, it was a... Um, um, how can you say it was a Dell boy, you know, in London. And, and, and that's the type of foot, that's the type of football that he went through and he played and he, he had a very success. And then he wanted that to be coming into the England. So you had four different people trying hardest to put, you know, all great managers in their club, right. And all good managers in the, into the national team. Um, and then you come now, then you've got, other, you've got other managers that were what I call were just assigned by the board. You know, he's available, he's available, he's available. You know, and, and, and some of the managers just aren't my cup of tea. I couldn't, you know. Sven tried, but I didn't see it coming through. You know, it was nice, nice. Uh, Roy Hodgson, not in a million years for me. I'm sorry, you know, the, the, uh, I mean, but that was, I think, the choices from other people that, the, you know, Terry Venables would have been great all the way through because he came with a player personality, but be able to put it into an international scene and talk to the players and, and because he knew where the players come from. Robson knew where the players come from. R Greenwood knew where the players come from. And so did Reavy. They all knew because they'd been there. And so that was a lovely combination because when you're having a bad time, you know, the first thing you do is what, not a manager that pats you on the back and, and, and blows smoke up your backside. You want him to be able to sit and talk with you. And I think a little bit of Tommy Tuchel could be there as well. And that would be nice. And, 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 and if it comes out, I'm, I'll be happy. I, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be happy to watch and see you know and both united and england you know not everybody can win that's what people have got to accept not everybody can win and there's going to be changes john and and as i said the game has changed tremendously from 40 50 years ago but the principles of all principles are still the same keep it simple put the ball in the back of the net more times than the other team. And on that note, I'd like to see United scoring more goals. Of course, we've talked about this before, as we identified the last time we spoke on our podcast. I think goal scoring is the biggest problem for United. So getting back to the Premier League on Saturday, United at home to Brentford. Any predictions? I just want to see United scoring goals. That's what I, what I want to see. No, I, 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 you're going against Brentford and, and I, I like their manager. I like their manager. I, I, I think, it, you know, yes, he's a, a young manager that's come through and is starting to show his wares, which is really good. Um, 
it all depends what goes out there and it all depends, you know, you've got players coming back from international. If you're on international duty, John, you're not really if you don't play. You've just gone away, been part of the squad. But if you're an, a, a main player that plays for your club, then I think then, you know, you, you're looking and saying, well, we're going to Brentford. What do you get for Brentford? You get nothing. You get a cup of tea and a shower. See you later. Bye-bye. And I think that's the attitude Eric Ten Hag has got to take with United. You come to United, all you're going to get is a cup of tea and a shower. You don't come to our castle and start telling us how to play. I may be wrong. I, I, if I am, you know, so be it. But that's my football that I've always been taught with. But Saturday, John, I, I can't. It's, it's amazing. Sometimes you can say, I tell you, I think we've got to win here. All depends who turns up. That's, you know, Brentford aren't going to say, oh, hi, you Ten Hag. Yeah, yeah, there's three points. No, no. The one statistic that's worrying me quite a bit is that United have only scored five goals in the Premier League. While Brentford's top scorer, Mbomo, I believe he's already scored six on his own in the league. On top of that, I do respect that Thomas Frank is a really good manager. He's been there six years and it goes to prove that you do need time to develop what you're trying to do at a football club. This, of course, is only Eric Ten Hag's third season. He's only just started that third season, but it does feel that we are approaching the moment of truth for Eric Ten Hag. We do need yeah. to see some progress. I do think it's going to be harsh to judge him on the Brentford game because he's got to hit the ground running after this international break. What I would say, I think, is that the points are far more important than the performance on Saturday, if only to help ease the media pressure on Eric. What do you think? Well, the good thing is, John, that I, I've sent him the address of the local Tesco's to see if he can go and buy some goals if we don't get any. So, and that's a joke for people that think that. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's a worrying concern. It's a worrying concern. So, um, you know, wish him the best, but I don't, I don't, I have no feeling on that one, John. Isn't that funny? I don't have a, you know, it's like you win, you win, you lose, you lose. But I just want to see, I just want to see an entertaining game of football. I want to see him at least try and score goals. But you know, as we as we say, John, it's a funny old game, isn't it? It's a funny old game indeed. I just hope we're all laughing on Saturday night after Rasmus Hoyland has scored a hat trick. Touch wood. I must say, Rasmus Hoyland is my big hope this season. I'm a big Hoyland fan. I think he's not had enough service when he's played in many of the games that he's appeared in so far for United when he's not been injured. I also think Marcus Rashford is showing signs of getting back to where he needs to be. And I'm hoping that Marcus Rashford and Rasmus Hoyland can both be on the score sheet of the weekend. Hopefully we can get a good win. That's me looking at the game through rose-tinted spectacles. But any kind of win will be good for us yeah, on Saturday. Yeah, but as a fan, John, you're going to say that. And I hope that what you what you know what you would like to see comes true you know i look at it as a ex player um yes i want united to do well um I, I i can see they're not scoring goals um are they utilizing the forwards enough um are these players the biggest question are these players good enough that that that's that's my biggest concern so yeah, love to get a result at the weekend, but I'm not going to make any predictions because I'll get clobbered. <laughs> well, we've been going for over half the length of a football match. We've had our 45 minutes plus some injury time. So I think we have to say goodbye for now, Gordon. Yes. Hopefully the next time we chat, United will be pushing up towards the top four. We don't want to be sliding any further down the table, do we? Yeah, touch wood. We love it. We love you and I talking. I mean, we love it. OK, I hope you've got a good day ahead, Gordon. I expect you're probably heading out to a football pitch at some stage to do a little training, I guess. So I'll speak to you next time. Funny you should say that, John. Yes. <laughs> Thank you.